Welcome to the SAP HANA Academy. My name is Bob and in this series of videos we'll be going through SAP HANA Vora 1.3. In this video we'll be going through an overview of the video series. Let's start by going through an introduction into SAP HANA Vora. So although Hadoop is highly scalable, it's a challenging infrastructure to manage, lacking schema flexibility and out-of-the-box enterprise-grade analytics. Often, specialized programming skills are required to extract business value from the data stored therein. So SAP HANA Vora is an in-memory computing framework composed of specialized processing engines purposely designed for big data environments. For developers and data scientists, Vora allows the mashup of enterprise data with data in the lake. For business users, Vora provides modeling capabilities and enterprise features such as graph processing to display complex relationships and also time series modeling to forecast future values based on historical data. In terms of the architecture, let's have a little look. So in terms of big data, Big data is both distributed and processed on multiple nodes. Now, in terms of Hadoop, at the lowest layer, you have the Hadoop distributed file system. And this is the primary storage system used by Hadoop applications. It's distributed, so it provides high performance access to data across all your nodes within a cluster. Now, to process the data, you can use tools such as Apache Spark, which is an open source big data processing framework, which runs in memory. Now, SAP HANA Vora is an in-memory query engine that plugs into the Apache Spark execution framework to provide enriched interactive analytics on data stored in Hadoop. As well as being able to perform business intelligence on that data, you can also build your own apps and also, you can connect SAP HANA Vora to notebooks such as Jupyter and Zeppelin. Of course, it's very easy as well to connect SAP HANA Vora to SAP HANA, which is an in-memory platform for processing high volumes of data in real time. Now, this is bidirectional, which means if you build apps on the SAP HANA side, it can connect to data in SAP HANA Vora or Hadoop. And bidirectionally, if you build your apps which connect directly to SAP HANA Vora, you can use data which is contained in SAP HANA as a data source. So what are we gonna do in this video series? Well, imagine you're a user and you want to investigate and play with SAP HANA Vora and you want to install it yourself. Well, what we're going to do is create an instance within Amazon Web Services. To do this, you really only need a Amazon Web Services account. It takes a few seconds to sign up. And then you'll need access, of course. So after creating the instance, we're going to use SSH on a Mac operating system to access your instance. Now, whether you're using Windows, Putty on Windows, or SSH in a Mac, it's up to you. In the videos, we show you how to do both methods. Now, of course, Vora can be installed on different versions of Linux, but I'm going to use a SUSE Linux instance. Now, there are lots of ways of installing Hadoop, which, of course, is a prerequisite for SAP HANA Vora. An easy way is to use one of these deployment tools. So I'm going to use Ambari, which enables us to both install and monitor our Hadoop cluster. So when you install Hadoop, there are many, many services that you can install. We're only going to install the bare minimum because we're installing all this on a single instance, a single Linux instance. And the main services we're going to install are HDFS, Yarn, which is kind of a cluster management technology, and Spark. There's some others as well, but these are the main ones we're going to install. So after testing both HDFS and Spark to make sure that the base system is OK, then we're going to look at installing SAP HANA Vora. We'll show you how to obtain the install files and how to deploy the Vora Manager service using Gambari. Now, the two main SAP HANA Vora tools we're going to look at are both the Vora Manager, which enables you to start and stop your Vora services, as well as the Vora tools, which is used to model your data. Over time, we'll also have lots of videos on the SAP HANA Vora engines, such as the OLAP, Graph, Time Series, and Doc Store engines. Of course, after getting data into SAP HANA Vora, you'll want to get the data out. So we'll also have a few videos on both installing and configuring Apache Zeppelin, and of course, also building some analytics within the Zeppelin notebook. 
So the idea of the videos is that you, the user, can use Apache Zeppelin or any BI tool, really, to connect to SAP Hanavora, which will enable you to access your data within HDFS. We'll also have some videos which will show you how to connect from SAP Hanavora to SAP HANA. They'll be coming in the near future, so be sure to subscribe to our channel. Of course, you know where our videos are. They're on our YouTube channel. But if you want to get access to the scripts, all you need to do is do a search for SAP HANA Academy GitHub and then Vora and all the scripts you'll need to carry out these tasks if you want to follow along are available on that website. All you need to do is cut and paste those commands into your own Linux instance. So I hope you enjoyed that short overview of SAP HANA Vora 1.3 and be sure to subscribe.